This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, we have some breaking news to tell you about. Our team is at the scene of a serious car crash in Holden. That crash has reportedly closed down at least part of Route 1A. Our Craig Colson has the latest. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Craig Colson here on the scene of a, a serious accident on Route 1A in Holden, the scene of so many accidents before. Uh, we're pleased to be joined with Sergeant Andrew Whitehouse. Can you tell us right now what happened today? So, uh, for what we know right now is that one vehicle crossed the center line, uh, struck the other vehicle. We're still in the process of investigating uh, kind of how that happened and why it happened. Uh, but I can tell you that there was one uh, juvenile that was taken to uh, the hospital. He's going to be okay, I think. And then the, we just now got the second person who was trapped in the vehicle uh, uh, to the hospital. He's got some pretty severe injuries, but nothing that I, I think is like threatening. Okay. They're talking to you? They're alert? They, they were talking uh, to us. They were alert. They, they kind of knew what happened, um, just in a lot of pain. Okay. Uh, so many accidents here over the years. We were just talking about that. Yeah, this road is uh, probably one of the most dangerous roads in Maine, at least in my opinion. And it's, you know, it's a lot of traffic, a lot of speed, and and just, you know, a lot of chances for stuff to happen. Okay, where do you go from here? I know right now they're trying to get the road reopened. It's, what is it, around, you know, 5 o'clock or something like that? Yeah, so uh, right now we're just trying to get the vehicles out of the way. One vehicle actually went up on the uh, uh, embankment there and uh, on the guardrail. And so we're just trying to get that vehicle off and get the other vehicle out of the road and get this road open back up for traffic. Okay, Sergeant, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that's it from here on Route 1A. Um, we'll uh, continue to um, gather some of the details throughout the evening as they become available. But the good news right now, it sounds like two people are being brought to the hospital. They're being treated, and uh, they're going to, to try to get this road reopened. Alrighty, Craig, thank you so much for that update. Meanwhile, Hamden Academy was placed on lockdown this afternoon due to a potential safety concern there. According to RSU 22 Superintendent Nick Raymond, the school was placed on lockdown from 201 to 225 after the administrative office was notified of a threat towards two specific students. The Hamden Police Department was contacted and responded to investigate the threat. During the investigation, students and staff were asked to remain in their classrooms as a precaution. The investigation determined there there was no legitimate threat. Raymond says students were dismissed and all school operations have since returned to normal. Well, Graham Locker's family held a rally today at Bangor Library to, to bring awareness to their ongoing search for him. With winter approaching, the family is encouraging everyone to keep an eye out, especially hunters and those spending time outdoors. He could be anywhere. So even if it seems like to you, you're not in his area, he went missing in Bangor, he grew up in Waldo County, but we don't know where he is. He could be where you are, so please look. Graham's mother says he is diagnosed with schizophrenia and autism. She says if you see him, it's best to simply call 911 and snap a picture because he is likely to run away if approached. The family is also holding a rally in Augusta on Saturday and one in Portland on Sunday. Investigators say they'll never know what sparked a deadly fire in Stonington. They say the damage was simply too severe. In August, an explosion tore through the home on Fifield Point. 71-year-old David Crutcher was trapped inside and was killed. Investigators believe the fire started near some propane storage tanks outside the home, but because little was left, they couldn't determine what caused the explosion. They do suspect there was some type of flammable flammable liquid in the home that caused the flames to spread quickly. According to Shannon Moss at the Department of Public Safety, authorities don't suspect any foul play or believe anyone else was involved in causing the fire. Well, Searsmont Fire Department responded to a structure fire this afternoon. Searsmont Fire Chief James Ames says a mailman spotted the fire and soon after called for help. Ames believes the fire originated on the first floor of the home and quickly spread to the second level. A couple and their dog made it out of the home safely. We had a nice save. It was only two rooms actually. It had a lot of heavy damage. But we had uh, Montville, uh, Morrow, Lincolnville, Appleton, and ourselves. Chief Ames says the Red Cross is working to connect the residents with temporary housing resources. 
Former Governor Paula Page was at the Franco-American Center in Lewiston today where he addressed his position on some major issues. Food and heating costs were points of discussion for the former governor who suggested there should be an appointed energy expert beyond the regulatory group known as the Maine Public Utilities Commission. LePage says an expert within the administration would act as a direct contact to Maine legislators to advise how to best utilize energy at a reasonable cost. The topic of abortion rights also was top of mind. LePage has been heavily criticized for conflicting responses on abortion. It's not my position, and I've answered it a million times. It's not my position. The law in the state of Maine, as it currently is, is the best compromise you could ever expect from a blue state. The former governor says he feels very good going into the election with just three weeks to go. Well, Governor Janet Mills walked around Waterville with city leaders to discuss steps they're taking to modernize the city. First, the governor viewed the new Sukforth Family Sports Center at Thomas College. More than half the students attending the institution are student athletes. Governor Mills says renovation projects like that not only support students, but encourage younger people to stay in Maine to pursue higher education. Next, Mills hit the streets of Waterville with Mayor Joe Colio to meet with local business owners. The two discussed the possibility of adding a new mixed-use development. The project would create 75 residential units with a total size of 100,000 square feet and would also include some commercial spaces. A select number of the proposed units would be supported by the Maine Housing Rural Affordable Rental Housing Program. The project's developer intends to go in front of the city's planning board next month. A group of local towns is getting a broadband boost. Spectrum announced the completion of a $3 million network upgrade with high-speed broadband to more than 1,600 homes and small businesses in Etna, Newburgh, and Swanville. The announcement was made today at a press conference at the Swanville Town Hall. Senator Susan Collins was on hand for the event and says high-speed Internet is so important for safety and is also needed for businesses to thrive in rural areas. Investments like this in bringing fast, reliable broadband are critical to rural communities in our state. I think we've always known that, but it really hit home during the pandemic. Spectrum says the project is part of their commitment to bridge the digital divide and ensure families have a reliable connection to their loved ones, co-workers, schools, and medical services. Definitely something that's very important in this digital age. Absolutely. And now let's hit pause here and take a first look at our forecast. All right, we made it. It's Friday night. Your first weather is brought to you by Goose River Farm Meat Store. And okay, look what we did today. Highs back up near 60 here in Bangor, 58 Bar Harbor. We'll take it. Tomorrow a bit warmer, same thing for Sunday, and even warmer temperatures now for later on next week too. Lots of clear skies out there today, uh, likely staying partly cloudy to clear skies again tonight. In fact, we are in a nice little dry slot there. That will miss us to the north. There's one behind that that will likely catch us later on Monday and Tuesday. Our forecast then for tonight though is partly cloudy skies to mostly clear skies. Your campfire smoke is going to rise straight up tonight, little to no wind with low temperatures down near 40. Your full forecast is coming Coming up. All righty, Jeff, thanks so much. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, Glenburn residents express frustration after a culvert washout causes headaches for drivers. And the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife issues a reminder for hunters in the Fairfield area. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. You work the night shift, take the extra shift, wake up before dawn. And every paycheck you pay into Medicare and Social Security to fund the retirement you deserve. Bruce Poliquin voted to cut Medicare and put Social Security benefits at risk. He even wants to raise the retirement age. Pretty rich coming from a millionaire politician who's never had to pull an extra shift. Moderate PAC is responsible for the content of this ad. Hammond Lumber Company, a fourth-generation family-owned and operated business with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire and a legacy of service to the community, is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the 2022 Plain Poll to benefit the Travis Mills Foundation. Hey everybody, Travis Mills here, founder and president of the Travis Mills Foundation. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the recalibrated veterans and their families, I want to say a massive, huge, gigantic thank you to Hammond Lumber Company for their continued support. I appreciate them, and I hope you do as well.
Jay Leno live in concert. Researchers at Washington University report that 100,000 years from now, the average size of the human head will greatly increase. They say the larger the head and the larger the jaw, the more sexually attractive people will be. So I am 100,000 years ahead of my time. That's right. Saturday, October 22nd, Collins Center for the Arts, Orno, Maine. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com. 87,000 new IRS agents. Jared Golden and the Democrats in Congress voted to hire them. They doubled the size of the IRS to seize another $20 billion in new taxes from the middle class. And now Democrats openly threaten to raise taxes again next year. Jared Golden won't stop them. He votes with Biden and Pelosi 83% of the time. It's a war on the middle class, and Jared Golden marches with them. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Officials have issued a reminder for deer hunters in the Fairfield area. Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife issued an advisory last year for hunters not to eat any deer killed in the Fairfield area based on testing done that had found elevated levels of dangerous forever chemicals, also known as PFAS, in deer meat harvested in that area. Wardens have retested the area since then, but are awaiting those results from the PFAS testing laboratories. This summer, early this fall, in August and September, we collected another 60 deer samples from within that entire advisory area. And our hope is that you know we'll be able to refine that area based upon those samples. Well, here is the area that they are, in fact, talking about. And you can find this map on their website, mefishwildlife.com. The department hopes to provide the updated PFAS results before the start of deer gun season. If you live on the other side of the culvert break on the Pushaw Road in Glenburn, taking detours and watching and waiting for the work to be completed is all you can do at this time. Matthew Duransic has more. The heavy downpours Maine received Saturday brought with dramatic damages to the area. In Glenburn, the rain caused the culvert on Pushaw Road to wash out. Uh, it's a big inconvenience getting to both Bangor and Orono. Um, takes an extra 10 minutes to get to Bangor now. My route went from 53 miles to 68 miles. Maine Department of Transportation workers were on the scene removing the overflowed water from the area and making room for the new culvert. In the meantime, residents have to use Hudson Road as a detour, which many say has been frustrating. You try to make it your trips count, so you're making one trip instead of maybe a couple. And residents along Pushaw Road never expected the rain to cause this much damage. Over it sometimes gets blocked up with stuff, but the erosion wasn't there until that morning. We just, we crossed it Saturday morning about 7 o'clock and never even never even noticed the high water or anything. As a mailman of 44 years, Mark Tripp hopes this area will be reinforced for future weather events. Well, with the changes in the weather we were having, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to shore up a lot of infrastructure, this being just a little part of it. Talking to DOT staff, they said they're not sure how long they're going to be here for. Reporting from Glenburn, Matthew Jaronsik, ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, when you travel down Route 166 around Fort George or Maine Maritime Academy, one of the first things you see is the trees. Castine has been known as one of the most beautiful small towns in Maine. The assortment of American elm trees that line the streets is a reason for that. Unfortunately, some of those trees, as old as 170 years, have been under attack throughout the years from disease and infestation. This year, they fell ill more quickly than usual. The season went... Uh, very poorly regarding the influx of uh, Dutch elm disease. It was a bad summer in Castine as well as statewide and up and down the coast. So the bark beetle has returned with its spores that infect the trees. We had well over 30 trees infected in Castine. The town arborist has been doing his part to combat the illness by treating the trees and cutting back infested branches. Castine plans to keep up the fight to preserve these legacy trees. Certainly some impressive ones there. Hopefully For they sure. can preserve them. Yeah. 
Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, we'll hear from Mainers about how they're planning to celebrate this Halloween. And in sports, Maine men's hockey prepares for a big matchup with Quinnipiac at the Alphonse this weekend. We'll have that story right after the break. We're paying more for food, gas, and rent. But Janet Mills wants to take even more of our money. Mills created a costly new grocery tax. Mills tax could cost us almost $60 more per month. Mills wants to raise the gas tax even higher. And thanks to Janet Mills, we're paying more to heat our homes, a lot more. We can't afford four more years of Janet Mills. The top funder of the Maine Republican Party is the Republican Governors Association. Joe Biden is crushing Maine. And who does Jared Golden support? Golden's backing Biden. Jared Golden said Joe Biden has leadership that the country needs right now. Higher taxes, record inflation, and still. Golden's backing Biden. In D.C., Joe Biden relies on Jared Golden's votes. President Joe Biden, and I'm asking you to vote for Jared Golden. Jared Golden says he's independent, but anytime it matters, Golden's, Golden's backing, backing Biden. Biden. I'm Bruce Poliquin, and I approve this message. I'll always be an independent fighter for you. Maybe he used to be. But when it mattered, Jared Golden helped Joe Biden hike taxes by billions on people making as little as 20000 a year and nearly doubled the IRS, targeting middle-class families for more, all while giving new tax breaks to the elite. Jared Golden, he's not our independent fighter anymore. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. 87,000 new IRS agents. Jared Golden and the Democrats in Congress voted to hire them. They doubled the size of the IRS to seize another $20 billion in new taxes from the middle class. And now Democrats openly threaten to raise taxes again next year. Jared Golden won't stop them. He votes with Biden and Pelosi 83% of the time. It's a war on the middle class, and Jared Golden marches with them. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. The Biden agenda in Washington is hitting Mainers with historic inflation, and Janet Mills is making things worse. Under Biden and Mills, Mainers will pay 72% more on home heating oil. And with family budgets already stretched to the breaking point, Mills has stretched them even further, imposing a grocery tax that increases monthly bills by $60. Maine families simply can't afford Janet Mills. The top funder of Maine Families First is Thomas Klingenstein. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com. Welcome back in. Thank you for staying with us. We will start on the ice. Maine men's hockey with a big test ahead of them this weekend when they welcome Quinnipiac into town. The Bobcats are the third ranked team in the country and when Maine takes the ice this weekend, a former Bobcat will be skating out to take on his old team. Matthew Fawcett joined the Black Bears last season after a few years with Quinnipiac. He played in 20 games with Maine last year, totaling 12 points and says even though they're on the other bench, it's always good competing against his former teammates. Yeah, there's three guys in my class are seniors, so uh, it'll be great to go up against them. You know, I'm still close with them, so it'll be fun to compete against them. And uh, a couple of uh, fifth years, I was uh, there with them as well, so I'm excited to play against them. And they're a very structured and detailed team. Uh, they're not going to make many mistakes or give us much, so we're going to have to work for everything we get. But if we play to our structure and our details and play hard, I think uh, we give ourselves a good chance to win. Now, Quinnipiac is Maine's second top five test of the year after playing the top team in the country at the University of Denver two weeks ago. The Black Bears have another tough battle in front of them for the home opener, but they're excited for the challenge. You know, they're they're a program that a program like us, you know, try to emulate down the road. You know, because they they get players, they get good players, but they make their players better. You know, and um, I give their staff a ton of credit. Um, it's going to be a great experience for our guys to go and play a team like that, where every mistake gets magnified, and then when we when we get a chance, you got to capitalize. Two-game series with the Bobcats. Saturday night it starts at 7, followed by a 4 o'clock game on Sunday. Let's stay with the Black Bears now. A big day 
for Maine field hockey hosting Vermont, and with the win, they'd repeat as America East regular season champions. The 11-3 Catamounts roll into Orono with two straight wins. Maine is 10-1 in their last 11. We'll start in the first quarter. Mallory McKeezy takes a shot. It's blocked, but Bree Kennedy is there, who finds Sydney Meter to punch it through. one nothing Black Bears. Couple Mainers hooking up for that goal. Still early, Maine trying to add to it, but a nice sliding save here from Sierra Espelon keeps the game within one. Vermont now, it's their turn on offense, but look at this save from Mia Borley. She's the top goalie in the country. The kick save from her back, getting the laundry dirty, keeping the Catamounts off the board. Vermont would score early in the second, but late in the fourth, McKesley with the falling backhand puts Maine up 2-1, to one, and they'd win by that score. All right, on to some high school sports now. Preliminary games starting this weekend for fall sports, so we'll check out a Class B soccer prelim down in Newport. <laughs> Ten-seeded Belfast, they are visiting the seven-seed Nokomis, and this was a defensive battle midway through the first, a chance for the Lions. Alana Nichols puts this one just over the crossbar, still no score. Five minutes later, here comes Natalie Hamlin again. She's charging in, tries to cross it, but it's a little too slow. Abby Karen with the save. Ten minutes in the half now. Nokomis with a shot. Abby Golden, a golden chance, but Morgan Curtis swipes it away. This game would go into two overtimes and a shootout. Nokomis wins 4-2. to two. And with high school sports, we are winding down on sports blitz season. It's week eight tonight. We have a big playoff matchup in Bucksport coming your way. Some big Class B matchups and more. That's tonight on ABC 7 at 11 with Friday night kickoff on Fox 22 at 10 p.m. So we will see you tonight. That is all the time we have for sports. Here is Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff. Here we go. Your full weather is brought by Varney Ford, the nice car and truck people. And this is fall in 2022. Still lots of fall to get through. However, even warmer temperatures are in store for us next week, where a couple of us could go for 70 across the area. But today, though, we'll take it, right? 60 here in Bangor, 58 Bar Harbor, 57 Millinocket. Uh, we could easily be in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. We're not. We're near 60. And so we'll pay for this at some point, just not yet, as warmer temperatures are on the way. Also on the way, some more winds. So not for tonight, though. These will actually go calm for several hours tonight after we had wind gusts today near 25 or 30 miles per hour, making lots of waves on the lakes today, but not as windy tomorrow uh, after a calm wind tonight that will likely give us some dense fog. So you know what that means, that radiational cooling, uh, dense fog likely 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. If you're out driving, take it easy out there tonight. All right, lots of clear skies across our region right now. And in fact, we are in a very good spot for the entire week except for late Sunday to Monday. Our next front gets in here then, likely with some rain showers on Monday. Until then, though, bright sunshine out there today. Another day full of sunshine for us tomorrow, and even warmer temperatures are on the way. So this guy right there, that's going to miss us. But this one over here, that'll likely be uh, in our region later on Monday, bringing us some rain showers. Behind that, though, even some warmer temperatures are on the way. Uh, not a very October-like pattern, right? Okay, so drought conditions. So, of course, decades of drought across the west but we have had a lot of rain around here remember all summer long we were dealing with a drought across much of the area that is now diminished to pretty much nothing after several rounds of heavy rain so here we head into fall and then winter we'll see the long range forecast of course has us about above average precipitation with near average temperatures so that could mean a partially snowy winter for us our forecast then for tonight though is lots of clear skies out there some dense fog is likely well after midnight we're talking early morning drive time tomorrow. Look for low temperatures or not so low. Low temperatures down near 41 with that south breeze around 5. For tomorrow, all right, this is Saturday in late October. Mostly sunny and breezy. You're going to feel that wind tomorrow. High temperatures near 65. That southwest wind could gust near 30 again, making more waves on the area lakes. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast, some things going on here. So tomorrow, 65, Sunday, 66. Okay, a little front gets in here on Monday with some rain showers, likely lingering into Tuesday. But it's actually going to be a warm front. We have even warmer temperatures in store for us on Tuesday into Wednesday. Many of us could go for 70 next week, Wednesday into Thursday. Okay, 70 is going to be a little jarring if that happens. Yeah, seriously, mm -hmm. but a very pleasant weekend on the way. Indeed, 70, <laughs> no thank you. All right, well, there's still more to come after the break. Stay with us.
I was a public health nurse for 29 years. I went into the homes of my neighbors, including many seniors, and cared for them. Then Paul LePage became governor, and everything changed. He kicked seniors off Maine's low-cost prescription drug plan. He cut a Social Security program when it was needed most, and even opposed Meals on Wheels funding. How cruel is that? We can't go back to Paul LePage. The top funder of Better Maine is the Democratic Governors Association. I'm Jared Golden. Seeing some Washington politicians try and enrich themselves makes you think of this. That's why I'm working to clean up Congress by banning members from using insider information to trade individual stocks and why I'm leading the way to stop taxpayer-funded pay raises for Congress. And I'm not taking any PAC money from big corporations that already have too much influence in Washington. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message to clean up Congress. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home the Kubota VX Series for zero down, 0% zero APR for 60 months, plus save up to $700. She's been learning about the founding of our country, about rights and freedoms. Freedoms that today are under assault. Politician Bruce Poliquin supported amending the U.S. Constitution to ban abortion. He even voted for a nationwide ban. Poliquin would allow politicians to stand between women and their doctors. He supported allowing states to outlaw abortion even in cases of rape or incest. We can't let Bruce Poliquin back in Congress. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. It's simple, and it's not an imaginary threat. In fact, it's happening right now all over the country. Bruce Poliquin would hand over control of our health care decisions to politicians. Poliquin would allow politicians like him to make abortion illegal, even in the case of rape and incest. But that's not the end of the story. Poliquin also supported a national abortion ban. So even if Maine says no, we still lose control of our health care decisions. Bruce Poliquin is a risk we just can't take. Center Forward Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Joe Baldacci was born, raised, and educated right here in Bangor. He's promoted and supported hundreds of millions of dollars in commercial and economic development projects. He has fought to protect vital services from drastic budget cuts. In his first term in the state Senate, Joe delivered for his constituents in Bangor and Herman on jobs, school funding, expansion of health care, and protecting the environment. Joe Baldacci, delivering results for the people of Bangor and Herman. Welcome back. The state of Maine is currently dealing with a shortage of police officers, but a local university hosted an event hoping to bolster recruitment efforts. Devin Dagnalt has more. It's getting worse. It's getting worse because we're dealing with things in the past that police officers didn't have to deal with. Throughout all of New England, there is currently a shortage of law enforcement officials. In order to combat that, Hudson University is hosting their annual Legal Studies Career Fair. For nearly 15 years, the event has introduced hundreds of students to criminal justice and law enforcement organizations throughout the state and beyond. We, we do this every year, every October. Um, we put together a bunch of police departments, some federal, state, local. Um, we bring them all together so we can give students an opportunity to look at their uh, career fields, what they might want to do when they graduate, and if they're seniors, give them a chance to give them their resumes and potentially have a job right when they graduate. According to experts here at the fair, the shortage of officers in the state of Maine can be attributed to COVID-19 and the restrictions it put on the Criminal Justice Academy. What happened in Maine is the uh, Maine Criminal Justice Academy got backed up, so they couldn't, because of COVID, they couldn't put as many classes through, so that means they have less trained officers right now. Jason McCambly, the public information officer for the Bangor Police Department, says that there are currently 10 positions available in Bangor alone. According to McCambly, the shortages put an extra strain on officers, both mentally and physically, that makes it more difficult for them to serve their community. If you want to get into law enforcement, get a degree in something that interests you. And it doesn't have to be focused on a very narrow field. Get something more broad-based if you want. After that, 
when you get hired by any agency, they are going to take you and they're going to send you the training and they are going to turn you into what they need you to be. In Bangor, I'm Devin Dagnall, reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. You know, I often speak to my friends in law enforcement. They talk about majors like political science, like sociology, mm -hmm. you know, history. Right. You know, all really useful subjects. So, you know, you really don't need to just focus in on that criminal justice degree. You know, broaden your horizons, broaden your knowledge, and then if you really decide you want to bring your gifts to law enforcement, that's what the academy's for. Yeah, I think it's really cool that they're stressing that is, you know, you don't have to veer away from your own interests yeah. if you are considering law enforcement too. Uh, so that's a great start for a lot of people maybe looking in that direction. Yeah, hopefully that flexibility gets them a few wins. Mm, absolutely. All righty, well, that's going to do it for us folks from everybody here at ABC7. Take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone.